for us to go viral. All right, Chris Carter, you were at the Hall of Fame weekend in Canton. Looked like an incredible time. The class of 2019 consisted of eight all-time greats. You had Ty Law, who had his whole Patriots family up there. There's Bill Belichick. Looks like he lives in Florida. Kevin Mawai added the finishing touches to his oh, bus. Oh, that's really cool. Right there. Nothing was better than Ed Reed's incredible bus. <laughs> I mean, look at that shot. Right? That's as good of a bus as I've ever seen, as far as true to life. Yeah, him and Kevin Green, they added the hair oh, yep. aspect. Um, yes. See, Tremendous you, bus. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Here you are oh. talking to the aforementioned GOAT, Bill Belichick. I mean, the whole football world's in Canton. You get these great opportunities, the behind-the-scenes conversations. We talked about the upcoming season. Troy Aikman's excited, our lead analyst here for Fox coverage on the NFL. My good friend Andre Reed. It's just so many just intimate little conversations. Guys are challenging other Hall of Famers. Shannon Sharp, uh, who we lead to after this. Him and Michael Irvin getting into a body contest. Oh, I saw that. Oh, it was, it, it, it was a tremendous week. I did a lot more hanging out this weekend than I typically do to a nightlife. Brought in a couple of your buddies from grade school that you have been friends with for yeah, 40 years. Yeah, I hung years. out with them. Yeah, had them hanging out with the Hall of Famers and everything. All right, but pull back the curtain a little bit. Give us a little nugget, a little detail from you and Belichick chopping it up. Something for us. You, you know some Belichick has a lot of respect for me. And I was watching him because I came into the conversation. I was watching him talk to someone else. And he was totally blowing the guy off and everything. I said, let me <laughs> save. Let me save, coach. So I came in there backstage at the ceremony and everything. He's always very, very gracious as far as his time. Conversation basically is about physical football and what they've done the last, say, last four or five games of the regular season, how they won their first three Super Bowls, and some of his players that I love, Stephon Gilmore, Dante Hightower, very, very physical guys, elite, elite and at their position. Yes, that's, that's, that's about it. That's awesome. Good, Good week. Stuff. Hanging out with your guy Warren Sapp, too. We saw that picture the other day. Yeah, some of that for TV, some of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's about what I figured. All right, time for Sapp some stories Daddy. to start. Your morning sponsored by Young Gillette Dream. Clear Gel. Over the weekend, Draymond Green agreed to a four-year, $100 million extension to stay with the Warriors. Golden State now with four All-Star players in Draymond, Steph, Clay, and D'Angelo Russell under contract for the next several years. Nick, is this a good deal for Draymond Green? I think this is great for both sides. For Draymond, he potentially leaves upwards of maybe 60, maybe 70 million on the table but he guarantees himself this hundred million. And I don't know if that deal for and at 170 was ever coming. And for the Warriors, they remove potential distraction, which was one of my big concerns with the addition of D'Angelo Russell. How would Draymond react to this guy who's never won any championships or played any games with the Warriors coming in on a max deal when he was a pending free agent? So this is an excellent deal for both sides. Draymond gets the security. The Warriors remove any possible distraction and know they have Steph, Clay, and Draymond locked up long-term for the next four years each. Yeah, good for Draymond. Draymond was in a tough spot. Draymond's not a max player. I don't believe he would have had 60 or 70 million out there unless it was someone with Phoenix where you're going to lose 50 or 60 games a year. No, he did the right thing. Stay in there with Steph, with Clay, because you can't exploit his weaknesses as much because they're so strong scoring the basketball. Now they have D'Angelo Russell. He can be a specialist. He can be that Swiss Army nice. His best fit is with Golden State. Happy for him. He went over Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, and they were able to get this deal done. And now a nice marquee when they all move into that arena. Do yep. you have those names up there? On to the NFL. According to Colts head coach Frank Reich, Andrew Locke will miss at least another week with a left calf injury. Locke has only practiced three days since originally injuring his calf back in April, but he has been a participant in walkthroughs. CC, any reason for Colts fans to be concerned with this injury? Of course. Any starting quarterback in the league, if they got a calf injury, you need to be concerned because you can't prevent it unless you try to put him in the shotgun. If they're in the season, then he might be practicing just a little bit, trying to get ready for the games. But, man, this is about perfecting your craft, even for Andrew Luck. 
his first healthy training camp in a long time. He gets a little nick, which we see all the time. But when you don't have those reps, they got a number of new pieces to that offense. Devin Funch is still building chemistry. Ebron only played one season. They didn't get many reps last year in training camp. So you want to keep building on what they got. Yes, this is something to watch for with the Colts. The rookie Paris Campbell as well. Very yep. limited time with Luck. I Luck seems concerned. I read his quotes in Peter King's column this morning. He asked, are you, are you worried that you won't be available week one? He instantly said no, and then he followed up with quotes explaining how he's concerned, how he's frustrated, how this happened in April. He had three MRIs. They said they thought it'd be fixed by now, and it's not fixed. So I don't think you have to sound the alarm bell yet, but it is something absolutely to monitor and something that seems to, at the very least, be frustrating Andrew Luck, who I think, if healthy, could be the league MVP this year. All right, moving on. We just mentioned it on Saturday. Eight more NFL greats joined our guy Chris Carter in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of those players, cornerback Ty Law, five-time Pro Bowler, who posted over 50 career interceptions. Law spent most of his career with the New England Patriots and won three Super Bowls there. Take a listen to what he had to say about the Pats. We created a culture of brotherhood and unselfishness that we displayed as we won three Super Bowl titles. Let's keep it real. We started. They even gave what, gave what we created a name. They call it the Patriot Way. But we know where it started, fellas. Together, we are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's great. It's probably pretty shiny up there. But that's why I had the glasses on. It was pretty bright. <laughs> uh, so we just mentioned earlier that Tom Brady just got two more years to stay there uh, in New England. Now you got Brady. You obviously have Belichick. H how much longer do you think this dynasty can last there in New England? As long as Belichick's coaching football, man, they're going to have a good football team out there. He understands pro football and the way it can be played. No one has the encyclopedia of football information. Man, he went back to the 80s and 90s and got that Super Bowl game plan for the Rams. Sean McVay was like, where'd that stuff come from? No one does it better than him, and you give him more time to prepare, which the bye weeks become very important. That's why they've been so effective. Yes, it's going to be open. I believe in his ability to be able to coach even beyond what Tom Brady's ability is, because I think he can get a team into the playoffs even if they didn't have Tom Brady. Now, he's been in this unique window with the GOAT um, at quarterback, but they've had several different styles. They've had all different types of coaches move, all different types of players move. The only constant has been Brady and Belichick. And you have seen last year when they couldn't throw the ball, they went to a more physical attack, running the football, playing to their defense. He will coach to the roster that he has. So as long as he's there, I believe the window will be open to win a championship. The, what we saw from them last year, I thought, in the last two games of the season, a perfect example how without the other one, e e individually, each of these guys would be really good. But it's the two guys together that, to me, make them the champion. In the AFC Championship game, Belichick couldn't have won that game without Tom Brady. And without Tom Brady, third and five with less than a minute left, 25-yard pass down to the goal line. In overtime, three third and ten plays. Edelman, Edelman, Gronk. That takes greatness at your quarterback position. And Tom Brady in the Super Bowl could not have won that game without Bill Belichick's game plan. Holding the Rams, one of the highest scoring teams in the NFL all year, to 260 yards total. Two rushing first downs. So I think, let's just assume Belichick coaches past Brady's career, which I think is a safe bet. I think they'll continue to be a playoff team. I think they'll continue to be good. But this level of championship excellence, to me, ends when the partnership ends. What, what's the, the comparison that's always made to the Patriots is Duncan and Popovich in the NBA. Since Duncan retired, the Spurs have been good. They, they've been to the playoffs. They, they, they made a Western Conference Finals even. But they have not been a championship caliber team since they lost that great player, even though at the very end of his run, he was not the best player in the league as he was early, similar to Tom Brady. So I, it, I guess it depends on how you define dynasty. I don't, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I think there's too many moving parts in football. I got into a great conversation with John Calipari and Jimbo Fisher during the event we have mutual friends. And Jimbo is always talking about how much more he has to know to do his job than Coach Cal has to know. 
Because if you have someone like Duncan, and the reason why I disagree, because Brady doesn't play defense. He doesn't play special teams. He didn't kick any of those field goals. And when we talk about Brady trying to, okay, well, Belichick couldn't have done it without Brady. Well, Belichick still had the defense that kept him in the game. See, Brady doesn't affect the roster like Belichick does. That's why I have to disagree with you as far as Tim Duncan, because the guy who's the 53 man on the roster, Belichick has an effect on him. Tom Brady doesn't. No matter what, this guy's running down on kickoffs, running down on punts. Tom Brady can't do anything to help him do his job. But Belichick comes up with a scheme, puts him in the right position, puts other guys so where his weaknesses won't be exploited, and specifically marks out a task for him to do something that he can accomplish. So how he affects the rest of the roster and his effect on the game it's totally different than basketball with one player with pop. There's so many other things that he's got to be able to do to have an effect. That's why I believe he will always be effective in pro football and believe that he can win with it. When they got Matt Castle as the quarterback, they won 10 games, right? 11. Yeah, 11 games. That right there speaks to his great. And I think he's understood football a lot better in these last 15 years and I believe that what he's learned with Brady will allow him to go on and coach and coach a, ver a variety of different styles. Oh and I think it speaks to Belichick's just universally accepted greatness that I think most people fully believe that if Brady were to retire this year next year whenever the Patriots will still be right there in it but you say all the time see a great quarterback in this league the great ones are worth three to four wins something yeah. like that and so even if Belichick makes it to where he can make a mediocre quarterback worth one to two wins as opposed to the three to four. Yeah. It, one of the reasons the Patriots have been to nine Super Bowls is because they never play in the first round, because they always have a bye, because they have home field advantage. And even, and we bring up that 11 and five team, the year Brady tore his ACL, 11 and five is one way to look at it. The other way is they were 16 and 0 the year before. So they were, they were, went from the greatest regular season team ever to minus five wins. So I don't think the Patriots era, meaning like, all right, cross them off. Now all of a sudden the Jets and Darnold are gonna run the division. I don't believe that. But I think it is the combination that has made them the dominant force. I think it's very, very tough. I'm just gonna always skew it because I know. I had too many conversations with head coaches and I know all the great quarterbacks that played the game. I know the effect and lack of effect that they have on the real roster and on winning. I know that it's slanted. You might want to give Brady, you, if, even if you're being generous, giving him 40%, is giving him too much. Because what Belichick, the mentality, the do your job, that's not Tom Brady. Practicing in the cold, on unpleasant conditions. You think that's Tom Brady? No. It's such Belichick and what they do and how the front office operates. It's so much Bel Belichick. To me, I'm going to say it's 70-30. Belichick with the 70, Brady with the 30. We keep talking about the Patriots up here and everyone else is just so far down. If this dynasty were to end, who, who's the other team out there in the league right now with the intangibles to be the next dynasty? Oh, there. Will, I don't think we will ever see anything like this in pro football again. There's no team that's even close no, to No, because you to did have this. to have the perfect story storm of it like you mentioned in 70 no. 30 whatever the whatever the percentage is yeah. you had to have the perfect storm of the greatest and the greatest at the two most important spots on the team yeah you also have to have an owner that believes I'm getting ready to trade a draft pick because this guy is just as valuable I'm getting ready to turn the organization over I'm gonna grow with him we're gonna stay together yeah. we're gonna groom this quarterback that we're gonna get on a low budget salary for 10 15 years no it's not possible